If you've been paying attention in the architecture industry, you would have noticed that arches are making a huge comeback. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. Firstly, if you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk all things architecture and technology. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you exactly how I created this masterpiece in Archicad 24. Now, like I already mentioned, Arches are making a huge comeback and they seem to be becoming more and more popular with apartment design, especially residential design here in Western Australia. Now, arches and curves in general are very complicated in Archicad 24. They've never been the default setting for any sort of architectural programs and they've never been preferred really by builders, but you have to stick with some of the trends, especially when you're trying to stand out in portfolios and resumes and things like that. So enough of my jibber jabbering, let's turn around to these two screens behind me and get started with today's tutorial. Okay, so like always, we're gonna start with the default template, whatever you guys have available to you. I'm gonna be starting with the Australian Select template because that is the default for Arcad 24 for me here in Australia. Now, Archicad 25 is actually being announced next week, so I will be doing a video specifically on Archicad 25 as we transition into the brand new era of Archicad. Today's tutorial is gonna be predominantly based on how we create beautiful arches with windows, but obviously we need to draw our actual architecture first. So simply what we're gonna do is start with a slab tool and press control and the down arrow to create our footings layer. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos before, you know I always start by creating a footings layer at minus 172. So all we've done is just command down or control down whatever system you're on and creating that footings layer. So let's start by clicking on this slab tool here, clicking once, drawing all the way across, pressing our tab button and typing in 30 meters by 30 meters. Now we have this massive square to start off with and we're not really gonna be playing with any of these sectional elevation markers in this video. So we're gonna click them all, control D and just simply click and move them away. So as you can see now, we have our slab. We're gonna start with our wall tool. We have an external wall. Doesn't really matter what we're gonna use for the wall. We're not focusing on construction details here or anything. We're predominantly focusing on those beautiful arches. So if we draw once holding the shift button, we can draw a dead straight square all four ways around and we have our square. If we come into this show 3D, we'll see that we've drawn a very small, very, very small wall. In fact, it's only 172 tall and that's because it's linked to our footings and ground floor. So if we open up the settings of the wall by clicking Control or Command T, it opens up our settings and we have a bit more freedom. So our home story is gonna be the ground floor and we're not actually gonna link it to anything. I'm just gonna make it straight up 10 meters tall. And there we go. We have our first wall and block created pretty easily and pretty quickly. Now this slab is way too low. So I'm gonna change that to 172, lift it up. So it reaches the edge of our wall. Now, just looking at this straight away, I think the proportions are out for what we're trying to create, but that's good. It means we can actually go around and change a few bits and pieces. So what we're gonna do is click once on this edge and drop that back down to 15 meters, drop that back down to 15 meters, go control up, come to our walls and do the same thing. So to ungroup that, I've just done Alt G, control G, 15 meters in, control D, 15 meters in, and then I can hold the control button and click away all of these walls. So now if we come back to our 3D, we'll see the square is significantly smaller and we're gonna be able to start drawing some arches into this design. So I'm thinking that it's gonna be a very simple upside down glass panel here, normal arch panel here, wrapping around, repeating that pattern on all four sides. So overall, it is a very, very simple design, but it is a bit more complicated to create in Archicad. So let's start with the simple and most basic window, which is the typical arched window. Now, a quick little break. Make sure you smash that like button to help with the YouTube algorithm. I promise quick, so back to it. With a typical arch window, all we wanna do is go to the window tool, open up our window tool, and start by clicking arch. And straight away, you can see we have this arch top window 24, which we can use as our default principle for creating that window. As you know, I hate these orange lines, so I always override them straight to black so we don't have to look at the orange horrendousness that it does show as default. So if we open up our window, we can see what's going on. 
We can manipulate our glass later on, but let's just go to a fixed glass panel and start actually adjusting the size. I think because we have a 15 meter wide building, we're probably gonna have to have somewhere about five meters wide, which also means we're gonna need a very, very tall arch to be able to compensate for that. So let's go 10, or 10 meters is our actual overall building height. So let's go uh, maybe seven and a half meters and see how it looks. So let's now start with this and move on as we require. So if we drop our first little window in right here, clicking once, clicking again to let go, it creates our first arched window. Now I do wanna set that down to ground level and it's still too small in my opinion. So I'm gonna bring that up to about nine meters and I'm also gonna make it, I believe seven and a half meters wide, probably a little bit too much. So let's make it six meters wide. Okay, so once we've created our first arch window, we wanna go into the settings and actually define what we want it to look like. So first of all, I don't really want this main sash coming across here. So we are gonna get rid of that transom up the top. And secondly, I want it to have some sort of grid throughout because it is a very large piece of glass and something like that would be horrendously expensive and almost unfeasible in real life. So I think I'm gonna go something like the default three by three grid, but making them 100 by 100 mullions and going all the way throughout. Our frame as well is quite thin. We'd want it to be a lot thicker than that. So we're gonna just manipulate these settings here. So let's make it 100 thick, 100 thick, and just 100 thick. For the purposes of argument, nothing really else. Now if we click OK, we'll get our default window created. It is quite thick and chunky, but it is also quite nice. So what I'm gonna do next is just change the materiality of it. I really wanna focus on getting this window right because you'll understand why in a second creating an upside down arch window is a huge complication in Archicad and we wanna get the first window 100% correct. So let's change the materials on this window. Let's say we wanna make this, oh, I don't know, we'll paint it titanium white for the time being and we'll make sure all those settings are identical. So it's painted titanium white, the pen tool is gonna to be black, We'll change all of them to black by default so nothing comes across. Clicking OK and we have our nice white painted window opening here. Now, just a quick interlude before we go any further. I have recently just made the architecture group chat on Discord completely free for everybody to join. So if you wanna join a Discord chat where we talk about all things architecture, these videos in general, and just discuss and help each other out as individuals, professionals, students, architects, designers, anybody in the industry, feel free to join the group chat down below. There is also a Patreon link just below that if you want a copy of any of the Archicad files that I have created. Now this is where it gets a little bit controversial and there is a magnitude of different ways of doing this. You can do it by downloading different libraries, you can do it by downloading different windows, but this is the simplest and easiest way I've been able to find that you can do it in Archicad 24 without going outside of the standard parametrics that are installed in the program. Unfortunately, you can't just simply go into these settings and flip this arch from the top to the bottom. So what we're gonna do is come back to our ground floor. We're gonna move this window, let's say we'll move it 500 millimeters from the corner. We'll take it, copy it by clicking Command D and then tapping the Command button again. Command D once more, 500 millimeters from the corner. We're left with two meters. So I believe if we push that another 500, push that another 500, we'll have a symmetrical uh, gap between all. So one meter, one meter, one meter. Now this is again where it gets controversial and there's a million and one ways to do it, but this is just the quickest and easiest way I've found for you guys. So select the window you want to be the opposite way. Right click, convert to morph. It's gonna give you a whole bunch of errors. We're just gonna click okay. I'm gonna mute my sound so you don't hear that beautiful sound again. Open up the settings and we're just gonna change all these lines to black. There we go, we have an identical window on this side. We're gonna click on that window, Command E to open up the rotate tool, flip it all the way upside down, and we're just gonna simply make sure by going back into our ground floor plan that it is in that exact location where it was before. So Command D to be able to move it and adjust it, back into our 3D window, clicking on it once more, Command D at the very top of that frame, 
all the way to the top of the building and then we're gonna highlight this simple window opening and then simply move it to the top of that wall, same as our window. But what we're gonna to have to do next is simply drag it halfway up to where that arch is, copy that down all the way to the bottom and readjust this shape that we've just created. So reselecting our simple opening tool, clicking on that once more, we're gonna start adjusting the opening. So what we really want is a round opening 24, clicking OK, it's gonna give us our nice round opening. Let's drag that all the way up so we can actually see it and make it significantly wider so it starts cutting our window. We do wanna drag the center of this window to the start of our last one and extending the size of our circle all the way to the bottom so we know where we need to be. Now finally, we just simply extend the top as much as we need to to be able to align that up perfectly. And there we have it, we have our first form of this upside down arch. And to be able to replicate that around the side of this building is relatively simple. Instead of going around and copying these windows, what I'm gonna do is select these three walls, delete them, copy this by clicking Control D, Control again, rotate once, selecting all, rotating twice. So now we have our 15 by 15 square with our wrapping arches and our beautiful flow. Now obviously this would need some sort of roof, so we'll just slap on a concrete roof by duplicating that across. I'm going to select both of those for the simplicity of this. And the floor, it'll probably be some sort of concrete, so let's just make it concrete light 23. We'll do the exact same thing with these four walls. Selecting all four, coming into the outside. Let's paint them concrete throughout. Concrete light 23, okay. And there we go, we have our upside down arch design. Anyway, that's all for me today guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new in ARCHICAD 24 today that you didn't know before. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and don't forget about the like button. The like button truly helps with the YouTube algorithm. So smashing it will only help more people find this channel and will only motivate me to keep growing this channel and keep growing this community. Like I said, that's all for me today. So I'll see you next Monday.